I see so many young women, middle-aged women, and even post-menopausal women where PCOS has been missed. Today, we're gonna to be talking about PCOS. Now, what is PCOS? That's a lot of alphabet, but it stands for polycystic ovarian syndrome. Oh my gosh, that's a mouthful. It's really important to understand though that PCOS has the word ovary in it. It talks about ovarian cysts, but it's actually a disorder that affects so many women and it's flying under the radar. It's getting misdiagnosed over and over again. And the classic kind of med school definition of PCOS, really, this is what we were taught. People with PCOS had a lot of heavy periods, they had ovarian cysts, they were usually overweight. Fast forward to today and even to my story, and we know PCOS is not that simple and doesn't fit that textbook definition by any means. Actually, PCOS is now thought to be a metabolic disorder. In fact, many people think it's just named wrong. It's actually a syndrome where insulin is going unchecked and really causing havoc with all of our hormones. I see so many young women, middle-aged women, and even post-menopausal women where PCOS has been missed. I don't want this to happen to you, and I wanna break down what PCOS is and what you can do about it naturally before we even start to talk about medication. All right, superstars, today I'm making this broccoli salad. It's one of my favorites because it's super easy and I can take it anywhere I go. You'll probably think the same, but watch how simple it is. But most importantly, how it can help your PCOS. So I'm starting out with a ton of broccoli, our favorite vegetable. And the reason I've picked broccoli is because broccoli helps in so many different ways. First of all, it has a ton of fiber in it. So many people with PCOS have a lot of bloating, they have a lot of constipation. I know we don't like to talk about that, but fiber can help resolve that for sure. Don't forget, I post new videos every Thursday. How do you know if you have high estrogen or if you're not breaking estrogen down? Well, here's some of the classic signs. So first of all, you may have a lot of breast tenderness. Do you ever get that where as your cycle's approaching, your breasts are just getting huge and they're painful or midway through your cycle, your breasts are super painful. So that's one sign of estrogen dominance, which is so common in PCOS. Another one is migraines, just getting headaches. Many women will tell me they get headaches and they don't understand it. They don't understand where these headaches are coming from. So again, broccoli is helpful there because it helps to really take care of that estrogen issue. And I could go on forever about all the different symptoms of estrogen dominance, but I wanna mention one more, actually two more. Let me mention two more because I think they're important. I don't want you to miss them. If you're having mid-cycle spotting or super heavy periods, those are signs that your estrogen might be too high. So that's why broccoli and its sister vegetables like cauliflower, kale, all of those are super helpful. But let's move on from broccoli. So I'm adding to it an onion and you may be thinking, what does an onion have to do with anything other than taste? And that's where we can get you because actually onion and garlic, which is another ingredient in this particular recipe, help with general inflammation. So one of the biggest things, actually this is my pet because this happened to me, is that PCOS really is an autoimmune disease. It causes just general inflammation and bloating. But by adding some of these ingredients like garlic, like red onions, and mixing them in with this stuff, we know that we can take inflammation down. And so inflammation looks different for everybody. Some people have brain fog. That's actually a sign of inflammation. Others have issues with like joint pain or joint swelling. That's a sign of inflammation as well. And then even things like uh, weird rashes, you know, rashes popping up, eczema, even acne, those are all inflammatory symptoms. So those are all things that we can tackle by really picking some of these anti-inflammatory foods. Okay, so I've got some onion in there. I didn't put too much because I don't want to have horrible onion breath, right? So moving on from that, we're gonna add some cucumbers just for an extra crunch. Now cucumbers are actually a diuretic. So many people with PCOS will have issues with swelling, with water retention. I'm also adding parsley to this broccoli salad because parsley, remember, supports the liver too. Now, you may have heard me talk about PCOS before, but the liver is a big part of this kind of puzzle because we can't move things through, we can't detox very well. Parsley will help with that, so you can add a handful of parsley to it. It's also a diuretic, so again, that swelling, that edema that I was talking about that many people feel with hormone swings, parsley can help take care of as well. So I'm adding in the parsley, 
I'm going to mix it up. Now you may notice, if you're really looking and paying attention, that I do have uh, the stalks in here as well. And there's a reason for that. We really are trying to conserve food waste. There's tons of fiber in the stock, lots of vitamins and minerals as well. So why not throw that in there too and let's eat it all so we're not wasting food at the same time. Hemp parts are high in protein. They're actually high in omega-3 fats. They have a similar omega-3 profile to fish oil. So if you guys don't like fish oil, here's your option instead. You can try these hemp parts. And then last, but certainly not least, is we have this tahini olive oil dressing that is delicious. It has a little bit of salt and pepper in it as well. You can put as much or as little as you want to your liking, right? I usually don't like too much dressing, so I'm a little bit more conservative with it. But again, the olive oil can help with lubricating your skin, preventing acne. The tahini adds some extra flavor to it and even a tiny bit of protein. And of course, when we mix it all together, we have something yummy and delicious that you can carry anywhere you go. I hope you love it, give it a try. Let me know what you think, but this is a great PCOS friendly recipe. We're always brainstorming for ideas, so if there are recipes that you would like to see, just comment below and let us know.